there's a ton of noise out there. So how do you get decision makers to pay attention to your brand? Start a podcast and invite your ideal clients to be guests on your show. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well, maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to B2B Growth. I'm your host for today's episode, Logan Lyles with Sweetfish Media. I'm joined today by John Ruji. He is the VP of Marketing over at SkyFi, and he's also the host of People in Places. And in addition to hosting that podcast, you probably recognize his name. He is a co-host in our category creation series here on B2B Growth. So a man of many talents. John, welcome back, man. Hey, thanks, Logan. I don't know about all those talents, but it's uh, always a pleasure to be back on the show. Yeah, man. It's always fun to talk with you. Today, we're going to be doing another episode in a different series. So you're you're kind of crossing over from series like a TV star from the category creation series now to the Why Podcast Work series. Because as I mentioned, you're not only a guest co-host here on B2B Growth with the category creation series you do, but you are the host of People in Places podcast uh, for your company over at SkyFi. So we're going to be talking about some of your uh, experiences there, the benefits you guys have seen in that podcast. But before we do that, let's kick it off as usual. Let's give folks a little bit of background on yourself and SkyFi, and then we'll start talking a little bit more about your podcast, man. Yeah, sure. So at uh, SkyFi, we are a software and data science company in the Omni Data Intelligence category. And we work with businesses like airports, large venues, retailers, things of that nature. And we help them measure, predict, and even influence visitor behavior. So we are headquartered in Sydney, Australia, but we have offices um, in the US, Brazil, South Africa, UK, and we work with about uh, 6,500 venues around the globe doing that. Awesome, man. And you've been VP of marketing over there for uh, a year or two now? Yeah, just about a year. I joined uh, early, to, uh, I'm getting my years mixed up, 2018. Nice, nice. Awesome, man. So as we mentioned, uh, one of the things you've been doing since you joined SkyFi about you know halfway into that first year is launching a, a show called People in Places. Full disclosure, we are Sweetfish is the team uh, helping you produce that show. So we're going to be talking about that. Uh, we do have some some knowledge in kind of how that's working, but I want to have you share with listeners more of the benefits you guys have seen and what your experience has been and advice for other marketers in that space, similar to what we've been doing here on the Why Podcast Work series in previous episodes. But give us a little bit of context on People in Places, your show, what it's about, who it serves, and give that context as we kick it off. Yeah, sure. So People in Places is a show that's all about helping people build better visitor experiences. So I mentioned some of the verticals we work with, airports, shopping centers, retail, and a few others. That show is all about finding experts and operators in those spaces who have advice on what it means to build better visitor experiences. In our particular event, we tend to focus on things like data-driven initiatives, uh, marketing-related initiatives, and, and things kind of in that vein. But I think the context that's probably most important for our conversation today is that for me personally, um, I hadn't spent a lot of time in these spaces in my own career. Um, in fact, that's kind of been a theme in my career just as a marketer. I've spent a lot of time in places where I don't really know that space going into it. And you know, any good marketer will tell you that in order to do your job well, you really need to understand the market you're trying to serve and more importantly, the people in that market. And so I've just found that doing podcasts are a great way to get kind of hands-on knowledge of what that industry is like and what the people working in that space are like. 
I love it, man. So you had some experience going into launching the show at SkyFi, People in Places, um, because you had some prior podcasting experience, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So in a former business of mine, we focused really heavily on the fitness space, which um, again, outside of just being a regular gym member, I didn't have a lot of experience in that space on the business side of things. And so another co-founder and I started a show I think it's still out on iTunes if you want to look at that blogging, but it's, uh, I think it's called The Gym Owner's Guide to the Galaxy. It was kind of a play on uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, if you've ever read that book. So yeah, so we focused on interviewing um, influencers in this space and then owners of fitness businesses themselves. And that was such a great way to ramp up my knowledge of what they were going through, what kind of challenges they were facing and what they were doing to solve those problems. Absolutely. So you've seen a, a similar experience in, in just the first six months of your new show, People in Places, and wanted to share with listeners some specific things that you and I had have talked about previously. You know, we touched on this a little bit at our customer mastermind group uh, down in Orlando as we were putting some customers and some other podcasters together, just talking best practices and some of the, the things that have risen to the top as some of the key benefits. And you have six specific ones that you wanted to touch on. There's kind of this common theme of really understanding your market as you're one who has, you know, been in marketing for a long time, but not necessarily in one industry, one space, uh, you know, across that span. And so you've had kind of a unique approach to, to that as well as podcasting. And the first one you mentioned to me was really understanding your industry as a whole when you are a podcast host. Yeah, that's right. So there's a variety of things that you should be doing if you're trying to understand a new space. But if you think about kind of the 80-20 rule, like what's the 20% of um, activity I can, can spend that's going to give me 80% of the, the knowledge about that space, it really comes down just to talking to people. You can read articles and books all day long, and you probably should do those things. You, sh- you can go to events, things like that. You can send out surveys. But in my experience, just having conversations with people, you learn so much faster. And the quality of information you get in those conversations is uh, just so much stronger living. Yeah. And really, if we contrast to that to, you know, what maybe a lot of marketers do is they're entering a new space or, you know, they're, they're leading marketing for a growing team that is, you know, entering a new market space or something like that, you know, doing surveys, those sorts of things. How would you kind of contrast your experience of getting to know a market versus, you know, surveys and other types of data collection versus having a podcast and being able to interview folks in that space? Yeah. Logan, why do you think salespeople are so much better at talking to people than marketers? <laughs> sets and reps, baby. It's just uh, sets and reps. You you flex that muscle more often, right? Yeah, I don't know what it is what it is about marketers, but like I think we tend to get so just wrapped up in like the data side of marketing, and that tends to be like the lens that we see the world. And so the natural extension there is like, all right, let's set up a survey. Or, you know, let's collect some responses on like a pop-up on our website or something like that. That's just, I think that's the default setting for marketers. Mm-hmm. But uh, like I mentioned earlier, you're going to get a, a limited set of information there. But I think when you talk to people, you can ask questions in real time. So like the process becomes much more iterative. If I send you a survey, Logan, and you get it, and you, you happen to send it back to me, you're like the 1% of people who respond to my survey. <laughs> um, it's, it's probably going to be anonymized. And even if it's not, I'm not sure how responsive you're going to be if I call you yet again and ask follow-up questions. There's a ton of work. But if I sit down and I talk with you, I can go through six, seven, eight iterations on your questions, digging deeper, asking why a bunch of times. And so just the ability to get feedback real time in an interview is huge. It's huge. Mm-hmm. You can't do that anywhere else. Yeah, that's a really good point. You know, you're set to, you know, I think it's good that a lot of marketers are becoming more data driven and and looking that way. And so it makes sense that that's the default. You know, we have a survey, we want to collect the data methodically, but then you miss out on some of those real time interactions, like being able to ask the right follow up question that wasn't baked into a form. The other thing is that you start to uncover the things that you don't know that you don't know, right? Because you can dig a little bit deeper in an interview format. Yeah, that's right. And so like you've probably experienced this yourself, but you'll ask someone a question and they might answer the question, but there's, you may not have phrased it just the right way or you you may have gone down a different road than they feel is really important. And if you have a good guess, like they will take you down the right path and they will 
they might answer your question, but then they'll add to it. And they may add nuance or they may add some context to that question that you would not have even known to ask about ahead of time. And so, yeah, you're absolutely right. Just figuring out what you don't know and then using that for your further line of questioning is um, a tremendous advantage. Yeah. One of the things I've heard you mention a couple of times now is nuance. You're asking questions and there's some nuance in how you can ask follow-up questions, those sorts of things. There's also probably, you know, you're, you're getting emotion, you're hearing in their tone of voice, or if you're, you know, recording via video, like we're doing now, you can see the body language, those sorts of things. And so all of a sudden you have another layer on top of that data to say, okay, this, this answer doesn't equal this answer because when they said this, there was a lot more emotion to it, right? Yeah, yeah, because a big part of what you're trying to do is uncover problems as a marketer because if you can understand the problem, then the rest of the conversation and the rest of your job becomes much easier. And so if I, you know, like if you, Logan, you're my potential customer and I put out a problem for you and, it's, and I get kind of a lukewarm response, that tells me a lot, right? It tells me that maybe I haven't phrased that problem or haven't identified it in the right way to really get the strong response that I need from you. It's hard to do that in a survey. It, like that, that emotion just doesn't come across. But if I, if I say something, <laughs> hopefully I don't, you don't make your guests like angry on the show, but if I, if I say something and it, you know, it, it, um, it triggers the right response, something really strong, then I know that I'm, that I'm on the right track. And um, I do that a few times over and now my marketing can get much better because I know what people can will respond strongly to. Yeah, that makes total sense. You know, I was listening to Jen Spencer over at Smartbug Media on her new podcast, Smartbug on Tap, and she was really encouraging in one of her first episodes. By the way, if you're not subscribed to that show, she has a wealth of knowledge and, and Smartbug is doing a lot of great things. But she was talking about marketing leaders listening to recorded sales calls. You know, there are a lot of technologies like Chorus and Gong out there right now that sales leaders are using for coaching. And her encouragement was for marketing leaders to start listening to those sales calls Calls, those recorded sales calls because it's becoming more scalable and there's a treasure trove of knowledge there. And the, the same holds true here as you're interviewing folks. The added benefit to you actually interviewing them as the marketing leader on your podcast is now you've built a direct relationship with them. And so one of the things you've shared with me before is that that has actually led to other introductions, referrals, which helps you understand the market that much more because you start to know all of the movers and shakers, get to know the market more and, and maybe find an intro that's, that's good for the company and, and leads to something down the road too, right? Yeah, that's always such a challenge if you're an outsider in a space and you don't have those industry connections. If you do a little bit of homework up front and then find the people who are already fairly well connected themselves, then they will open doors for you. And you probably, I'm curious to hear what your own take on this is the B2B growth because you guys have kind of gone through the same process. But I think, you know, when you get someone on your show, they then become a little bit invested in your brand and your, and your company. And so in a way they have an interest in seeing that company become successful, right? Cause if you're on a, if you're on a company's podcast, like it looks better on you if that company does really well. And so I think kind of a natural extension of that is by wanting that company to succeed and raising its profile, they will introduce you to other people who they think will be valuable for you and will further raise the profile of the show. Yeah, absolutely. And then you get deeper and deeper into your niche. I mean, you know, I can tell you nine months ago when I joined the Sweetfish team and became a co-host of this podcast, I really had no connections in the B2B marketing space. And now, you know, I have, I have great connections with folks that are thought leaders in the space, people that I really respect and have, have learned from. And they have said, you know, post interview, hey, who else can I introduce you to? Or I think you should really have this person on the show. And, and it was actually someone on my list that I would like to connect with. So I would say, you know, whether you're, you know, in, in an industry like you are with SkyFi, or if you're in the BB marketing space or whatever industry you're in, it, it carries over. And I think you've seen that in, in a couple of different spaces. The other thing that you said as we were chatting offline, John, that I thought was really interesting is this, this parallel, this comparison to conducting interviews for a podcast with folks in the industry that you're trying to get to know and 
language or cultural immersion, if you think about, you know, trying to learn a new language, I tried to learn Chinese in college that did not go so well. I'm tone deaf, so probably not the best language uh, for me to learn. But, you know, I tried to learn from textbooks and workbooks. And I've always heard that if you just visit a country and you're dropped in the middle and you have to figure things out, you learn the language and the culture that much faster. And it's, there's some comparisons there to being a podcast host in the industry that you're serving, right? Yeah, that's right. And I, I think this is maybe it goes back to one of the reasons why you know, marketers tend to focus on like the surveys and the emails that we talked about, because it is a little harder to put yourself out there and try to have an intelligent conversation with someone who knows 10 times, 100 times as, as much as you do in a given space. There's the risk that you, know, you don't ask the right questions. There's the risk that you look bad. No one will actually really think that you're doing a bad job, but it's like, these are just internal fears we have when we put ourselves out there and our voices are recorded live for the, the world to hear for, you know, eternity. But, uh, but yeah, like, I, again, like you like you said, you almost like you force yourself to internalize that material when you're listening to it, asking questions in response, um, and doing that over and over again. And I think, again, we, we talked about that 80, 20 rule earlier, like what are the 20% of things you can do as a marketer to, you know, learn 80% of what you need to know. And I think, again, just talking to people and forcing yourself to get immersed in the material falls definitely into that category. Yeah, absolutely. I would echo that, that, you know, I was able to, to learn so much faster about the folks that, that we serve at Sweetfish, which are, you know, primarily B2B marketing leaders by, by interviewing them. And at times I felt like I was a little bit out of my depth, especially early on. And there were those nerves that you talk about, but the ramp to, you know, learning and understanding what, what our buyers cared about and what people were talking about and being able to have those intelligent conversations ramp so much quicker. So I think it's, it, it's definitely worth it. John, if you were in front of a, a room full of marketers who are thinking about a podcast for their brand, what's one piece of advice, you know, either related to this idea of getting immersed in learning a new industry or learning their market better or something else, what would be your top advice, especially since you've been the host of multiple shows, uh, run marketing teams in multiple industries, and you've got some unique perspective there to give folks? Sure. So I'm a big fan of preparing for a show. And probably that just comes from me not being as strong of an improviser as maybe I'd like to be. So I kind of over-prepare. But um, one thing that's helped me over-prepare is to what I call reverse engineer my guest list. And so what I mean is if I can find a potential guest who's you know, written articles on their blog or they're posting on LinkedIn or they're mentioned in the news somewhere, that gives me so much more material that I can ask about intelligently than someone whom I know very little about. So I can say, hey, I, I saw that you were you know, quoted in this article as, as saying, you know, X, Y, Z, tell me more about, about that. What did you mean? Or you wrote this, you recently wrote this post about you know, this other topic. I had this question about this one thing that you wrote. If you can find people who have that, that um, content to draw from, it's so much easier to have a really thoughtful and, and I think informative conversation than um, someone you, again, don't know very much about. So yeah, that's my advice. Reverse engineer your guest list. And um, especially early on, life's going to be much easier for you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I've followed similar strategies in the past with um, finding people uh, that we want to connect with and interview. And I think you're spot on there, man. Well, it's always great to chat with you. Now we have actually been able to do an interview together here on B2B Growth. James has hogged you up till now. So thanks for making some time. It's always great to chat with you, John, and even better to uh, share some of your knowledge with listeners as always. So for people who don't know, what's the best way to get in touch with you, reach out, stay connected, or find your podcast people and places? Yeah, the best way to find me is probably on LinkedIn. But if you can't remember how to spell my last name or um, and you want to come back to it later, you can go to john.marketing and that'll pull up a little page with all my contact info and all that good stuff. So either one, thanks again for having me on the show, Logan. It was a real pleasure. Awesome, man. It's always fun to talk to you. And I, I love the things that, that you shared with folks, especially that, that last advice for folks thinking about a podcast and sharing your journey. Uh, it's been fantastic, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks again. We totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast, and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three.
three.